Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, this is another Q&A video. And the question I received is, if a person is unwilling to give up some sin, can they still believe in Jesus and be saved while in that mindset? And the short, succinct answer is yes. That's what grace is. But uh, I want to do something a little bit different in answering this. Um, I'm I I'm not against uh, contemporary Christian music by any means. There there are some really good uh, lyrics and uh, music, but the the old gospel hymns uh, are some of the greatest messages for grace salvation that you'll ever find. So to make this point, I want to look at this hymn, uh, Just As I Am. And let me recite this, and then I'll expand on this a little further. It goes, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot. To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. So, in this hymn, uh, this person comes to Jesus for salvation. He says, Without one plea, except that thy blood was shed for me. In other words, if we were, if we were standing in front of Jesus and he said, why should I let you into heaven? How would you plead your case? Would you make the plea and try to be justified by your religion, your your religious activities, your good life that you've led, your personal merit. The scriptures say no. That's, that's not how we get justified. That's not how we are righteous in the sight of God. We plead one thing. The blood of Christ was shed for me. Jesus died for my sins. I'm basing my plea, my salvation on Jesus being my savior. And in the next part of it says, Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot. We, we must not wait to clean up our lives and give up all of our sin before we come to Jesus for salvation. If you wait for that to happen, you will never be ready for salvation because you will never be able to clean up your life completely so you are presentable. So this says, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot. Don't wait until you, you've got rid of all the blots, all the sin out of your life. Come to Jesus as you are. And it says, to thee whose blood can cleanse each blot. Don't try to clean it up yourself. Jesus washes away all your sin. There is no more record of your sin, past, present, or future. And then as far as future sins and your activities of life go, Jesus, he will get rid of those blots in the future and transform you. Now let's look at another great old hymn. Not the labor of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save 
and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked, come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. Foul, I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. Let's start from the beginning. Not the labor of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Uh, it certainly agrees with Scripture that uh, it's not by our works we're saved. No, there's nothing we can do to satisfy the demands of the law. We all fall short of the glory of God. And we have to understand that we're helpless to make ourselves righteous. Could my zeal no respite? No. Could my tears forever flow? In other words, you could be full of zeal. You could be full of tears and contrition. All for sin could not atone. It doesn't matter how sorry you are for your sins, how many tears you shed, how contrite you are. Thou must save, and thou alone. We must understand our helpless, hopeless condition and go to Jesus for salvation. Thou must save, and thou alone. Depend entirely on Jesus for salvation. Then it says, Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Nothing in my hand I bring. In other words, God says, why should I let you into heaven? And you bring him a, a resume, a record of your life. Look at, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all of these things in your name? And then he says, depart from me, worker of iniquity. iniquity. I, I never knew you. Because these people are trying to be justified in the sight of God through the labors of their own hand, through their own efforts. These are the Lordship salvationists. But this says, nothing in my hand I bring. We don't offer Jesus anything. Salvation is not a deal. Salvation is a gift. We don't make a deal and a contract that, uh, Jesus, uh, I'll ch change my life. I'll stop all my sinning. I'll go to church. I'll do good deeds in your return. You give me eternal life in heaven. It's not a deal. You don't have to pay for it. You, uh, Jesus paid for it. You can't work for it and earn it. Jesus did all the work. We trust in the work that Jesus did. Our faith is in works, all right. But it, our faith is in the works of Christ, not our own. Simply to the cross I cling. The cross. The atonement. That Jesus died for my sins. He loved me so much. He was willing to die for me. And when we understand that, the Bible says, we love him because he first loved us. He loved us so much, he was willing to die for us. Jesus said, there's no greater love than giving your life for a friend. And that's what Jesus did. He gave his life for us. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Naked, come to thee for dress. Helpless, look to thee for grace. <laughs> Helpless. When we understand our helpless condition, how hopeless our future is, and that we need to put our faith in Jesus, believe in Jesus as the giver of life. Believe in Jesus. Believe that Jesus has the ability to give you eternal life. Believe that Jesus is faithful and does give eternal life to all those who come to him for it. Helpless, look to thee for grace. Foul, I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Foul. We don't try to clean up ourselves, blot out all, all of our sins ourselves, wash ourselves clean. 
No, instead, we come just as we are, foul sinners in need of the Savior. Wash me, Savior, or I die. That's right. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wash me, Savior, or I die. That's our choice. Die or live forever because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I know these uh, words are simply the words of a hymn, but they're all based upon what the scriptures say, and they're beautifully, beautifully stated. But the, the thing that we have to understand is that we need to trust Jesus to do the saving. We don't need to uh, build up a resume to present to him before he is willing to save us. We just trust that he will save us because he loves us and died for our sins. He gives eternal life to everyone who believes in him for it. Trust Jesus to do the saving. Now, as far as your future sins, will you trust the Holy Spirit to do the transforming? This is a, a big fault I find in many uh, professing Christians who who uh, want to require that people uh, to change their lives to get saved or change their lives to, to keep their salvation or they must change their lives to prove they're saved. No, it's... Salvation is not because of our effort, it's because of Jesus' efforts. And sanctification, transforming and growing into a mature child of God over a lifetime, that's not our work either. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. So, trust Jesus to do the saving. Trust the Holy Spirit to do the transforming. So, brother, your question was, if a person is unwilling to give up some sin, can they still believe in Jesus and be saved while in that mindset? And of course, the answer is yes. And I, now I'm going to give you a real life example. I've mentioned this person numerous times in my other videos. He's my best friend here in Las Vegas. His name is Tony. His name is Tony. Tony was an agnostic, and he was actually quite angry with religion, particularly angry with the priests molesting uh, children in, in Roman Catholicism, and he was cynical. And over the period of several years, you know, witnessing to him and, and giving him uh, evidence uh, to, to prove that the Bible is true and, and, and uh, that uh, Jesus is our Savior God, uh, he finally reached the point where he believed it all. But he was under the wrong impression that he had to first change his life in order to receive eternal life. And that held him back. And he resisted because there was some sin that he really loved. And he didn't want to give it up. And he thought, well, maybe if I ever reached a point where I... I I've done all that type of sin and I don't feel like I'm doing it anymore. Then I'll be ready to become a Christian. But fortunately, he learned that he didn't need to clean up his act. So he was suitable to Jesus to get saved. He understood that he needed to come as I am. And he did. And he's a, a great saint. And I'm thankful that he finally learned that uh, he could become a Christian and then Jesus would do the changing. And you know what Jesus did? The Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ living inside Tony transformed him and changed his desires. And it was very soon after that that the desires for that particular sin were taken away. And he doesn't struggle with it. So, don't think you have to 
repent of your sins and change your life and make a deal with Jesus that you're going to change and give up all your sins so that you are acceptable before you can get saved. Come as you are. So I hope this uh, message is helpful to everyone. And bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.